Mmm, yum. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, hey. So, you heard about the Intel Max heating up a lot, causing problems. Has yours been doing that? Listen, man, just because you've been prancing around with your M1 MacBook Air here that stays cool all the time, doesn't mean that we Intel folks can't get our jobs done. Say, what's that you got there? Oh yeah, I've got so much juice that I've just been charging all my devices from my MacBook Air M1. Well, good for you. Maybe you can power all your gadgets, but I can make breakfast. Hey folks, just a quick interruption here before we get into it. Parallels, the software I use to run Windows on a Mac, they were nice enough to give me some codes to raffle off to you folks. I have a bunch of these and we're gonna be doing this for several videos to come. Now, the rules are pretty simple, just like last time. Leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel and give this video a like and you automatically qualify for the raffle. I'll pick a winner two weeks from now. And thanks again to Parallels. Not a sponsored video, but hey, they're nice enough to give me the codes. I'll pass them on to you. Back to the video. Recently, you might have caught my video here. I was testing the MacBook Air M1 against my Intel Core i9 MacBook Pro, and I was continuously building a TypeScript project, trying to simulate what a developer's experience would be like going through development process as the day goes on, where the operation has to restart and you have to keep building and building. If you missed that video, go check it out. However, a few of you pointed out in the comments that they did their own test using the ARM version of Node, Node 15, compatible with the M1 chip, and their results actually blew away my results. And in that video, I was using Node 14, which is running under Intel. So today, I want to run them side by side. I wanna run the Rosetta version and the ARM version on the MacBook Air M1 that I have right here. And I wanna see what I get as the results on this machine running side by side. Now, in order to set this up, here's what I did. There's my regular terminal command. So I'm going to take a look at that. As you can see, it's just the terminal command, the native terminal that's going to run under Apple Silicon or M1 or ARM architecture. Now, if I wanted to run the terminal under Rosetta specifically, I would check this box called open using Rosetta. So this one is my regular terminal. And then I created a copy of that just by going to duplicate. And I call this one rosy term. I don't know why. I called it a uh, rosy term for Rosetta. This one, if you take a look at get info here, I have it opening under Rosetta. So just to make sure that I'm running node 14 under Rosetta and node 15 that's ARM compatible under the regular terminal that's designed for the Apple architecture. So that's where I'm starting off. I've also went ahead, opened these two terminals up side by side and I installed node 14 and node 15 side by side so I can run them at the same time. So if we take a look at this terminal up at the top here, you can get the architecture that it's running as by typing in uname-m and I'm going to do the same thing here. So the top one is running under ARM64, in other words, Apple Silicon. The bottom one is running under x86 underscore 64. So Intel emulation mode under Rosetta. So that's the terminal. Now also version of node is different in each one of these terminals. So if we take a look at the top one, node v is 15.5.1, which is actually the ARM architecture. And in order to check that you can go into node and type in require then process and then arch there it is arm 64 and i do the same thing down here first let's check the version version 14.15.4 let's go into node and do require process dot arch x64 so we're set up to run these two and i'm going to run the exact same experiment that i did in that other video on each one of these and we'll compare the results now if you remember that video i don't know if you've seen it but actually the dell came out on top the dell xps 13 and by running the code on this machine on the pure Apple Silicon ARM64 process, I saw that we're gonna get speeds faster than the Dell running Intel Core i7 Evo variety with 
uh, Core i7 11th generation. So I believe that this is going to actually destroy that test. I'm going to clear everything so we have a clean slate here. And here is that project in order to kick it off. Now let's just do a quick review of what it is. If you have not seen that video, I have a package.json file here with some scripts npm scripts and i'm going to run the build command the build command is going to build this typescript file which is index.ts and then run the execute script which is going to run the built output so index.js index.js is going to create a file on the file system and then increment the count i'll show you that in a second now after execute is done post build is going to run automatically and what post build is going to do is just delete the dist directory that was created in the previous step and then rerun build command automatically. So it's kind of like a infinite loop, a recursive process. Now, if we take a look at index, I can indicate how many times I want this to run right here. And that's how we exit out of that infinite loop is if it exceeds, if the count exceeds that number that I specify there, we're gonna throw an exception, pretty simple. Otherwise, we're just gonna increment the count and I'm going to save the count save the time, the total time that it took for this script to run, and then save the starting time as well so that I can calculate that each time on each pass. All right, if you wanna see more details about that code, check out that other video, but let's kick things off. So I'm gonna start things off easily uh, with 10 iterations. The count is gonna go up to 11 and we'll see how quickly this performs. So if you do want to make this video short and exit after that, you're fine to do that. If you want to stick around, I'm gonna do the 100 iterations test as well. I'm gonna edit it out, of course. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch the whole thing, but the 100 iteration test is the one I did in comparison with the Intel Core i9 MacBook Pro, as well as the Dell XPS 13 with a Core i7 chip. And that's the one where the Dell won. All right, let's begin npm run build. I'm gonna do these one at a time here, but I'll make the video sped up so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. And that's because I don't wanna run both of these processes at the same time using the same CPU. Now, while that's running, I'm gonna show you what's happening here. We have this my file that was generated as a JSON file, and you'll see the count is incrementing. The start time remains the same, of course, and then the runtime increments each time as well. All right, so just to go over what we're doing here. Oh, this terminated by the way, so it's done. Let's take a note of that time, shall we? 25.46 seconds total. That's the ARM process. Now, in order to kick this off again using the x64 architecture under Rosetta, I'm going to delete this file and I'm going to delete the dist folder as well, just so that we're starting from scratch. Let's head over to our rosy term. <laughs> NPM run build. Let's go. This is done. Uh, let's see. Count 11. And the runtime is 56.37. We'll round it off to 37 seconds. So as you can see, this is more than two times faster using the Node 15 version, using the ARM architecture. So thanks to all you folks in the comments that have pointed this out, and especially to N.I. Liev, who did his own test as well and reported it in the comments. That's always really cool to see folks like you commenting down below with your own tests. And I did post the code on there so you could run your own test and just uh, throw into the mix what your results are. If you do have a machine that I haven't tested on, that would be interesting as well to see. Now, I'm going to run this exact same test with 100 iterations. And I'm pretty sure that the M1 architecture, the ARM architecture version is going to still beat out the Intel emulation, but just to make sure we get the numbers all worked out so we have the same exact basis with the Dell comparison and to see by how much it beat the Dell with the Core i7, I'm gonna do the 100 iterations test. So here I'm gonna set count to more than 100 and I'm going to run the ARM process one more time. This is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'll be back. And we're done. Thanks for sticking it out and waiting all this time. I'm just kidding, I'm the one that waited. You didn't wait anything. You get to see the results right now. So the results are 20, 237 seconds. 237 seconds. Let's see, what is that? So almost four minutes. If I compare this to my previous results on the MacBook Pro with the Core i9, that same experiment ran in about 278 seconds. So a little bit slower than our current result on the M1. And the Rosetta process, the Intel emulation process on the M1 ran in 389 seconds. So significantly longer, but we can probably discard that result because 
we're not going to be using the non-arm version of node on the m1s for too long anyway it's just an intermediate step so if we consider that then the m1 is faster however it's still not faster than the dell which reported 189 seconds still quite a bit faster than the arm process on the m1 that was a little surprising to me i gotta say i thought the m1 with the node for arm would definitely run faster than the dell but the results are the results they speak for themselves so if you like this kind of video i'd appreciate a thumbs up if you like this video so other people can find it useful as well and if you like this kind of video you can consider subscribing to my channel we'll do more of these kinds of things and these kinds of tests with other machines and if you do have machine suggestions for me to try or processor suggestions leave a comment down below thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one